Are you harnessing the power of your subconscious mind? Do you know how it works? Are you wielding it to help you in every area of your life? What would you rate every area, career, finance, health, relationships? One out of 10, one being not so happy, not so hot about it. 10, 10 out of 10, so happy. What would you rate each category? Are you using your subconscious mind? Because that is what runs the show. I'm Carla Elizondo. Welcome to Inside Talk Show. It is an inside job. We're continuing the reading. Chapter one, we're finishing it up today. The Miracle of Your Mind, The Miracles of Your Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. Picking up where we left off, he was saying, many men are beginning to realize, men and women, the true importance of the subconscious mind. In business, many people are using it to achieve success and promotion. This will tell you how old this book is. Edison, Ford, Marconi, Einstein, and many others have used the subconscious mind. It has given to them the insight and the know-how for all of their great achievements in science, industry, and art. Research has shown that the ability to bring into action the subconscious powers has determined the success of all the great scientific and research workers. Do you think it's a coincidence that these greats, these thinkers, these innovators, these artists, people that create something new, thought leaders, that everybody looks up to, what is different about them? Do you believe that they have something you don't? Do you believe that their mind works in a special way, that they are savants or avatars? We all have this in us. What Dr. Joseph Murphy is saying is that these people, the Einsteins, the Fords, the Edisons, they have something in common. They understood how their subconscious mind works, that it is from that, that creative power, infinite power truly, is where these great ideas come from. Because it ain't coming from our logical, <clears throat> our logical mind. Our logical mind, our thinking mind, this logical mind, is not what creates wonderful ideas. Elon Musk did not create Tesla and SpaceX and all of that from here. He felt it. He believed in it. If he thought, believed everything he thought and what he heard, what was coming in from the outside, he says it all the time. He would never have done it. You have to feel, believe, dream, have it in every cell of your blood and bones. That's what puts into action, into motion, what's here, not what's here, but what's here into the world. We must understand how this works. It's not logical. Tesla <laughs> going to Mars, all of that is not logical. People think you're crazy. All of these people listed, Edison, Ford, Marconi. Wasn't Marconi like literally putting a straight jacket in, in a um, psych ward? I think he was. Einstein, all of these people, people thought they were crazy. Because crazy in the sense of that's unrealistic. Come on, get with the program. That's ridiculous. You're, you're just dreaming, buddy. Well, that's how it happens, and that's from the subconscious mind. There is a tremendous dy dynamo within you, and you use it, and you can use it. You can also be completely released. You must also be completely released from tension and frustration. You can discover the abundant energy within you, enabling you to energize and vitalize all parts of your body. Remember, what runs the physical body? This is our little physical body. We act, and by our actions, create our results. What causes our body to act? This intelligence, our feeling, subconscious mind. Because if we're not feeling it, it will never produce the momentum to take action. If I'm thirsty, I will reach for a drink. But if I'm not, I won't. I don't know if that was a good example, but I think I used it before. If you, when you love someone, when you're really into somebody, oh my gosh, when you're really into somebody, you feel it there in your heart of hearts. Oh my God, you're just, it's vibrating from your body. You're in love. You're just, you want to do everything to be with that person. But if you don't like that person, you are not going to take the action to be with them. It's like friends too. When you like a person, you're going to act and the results will be we're friends. If you don't like a person, well, that's another story. But that's in, well, if you hate a person, you'll probably attract them too because you're just thinking about them. God, why I hate this person. Coworkers, 
damn it, why do they always have to sit next to me? It's because you're emotionally involved with it. But when you're not thinking it's not in your heart and you're not emotionally involved with it at all, it doesn't show up here. But if you're emotionally involved, actually good or bad, it'll go into your body and you'll take action on it. So that subconscious mind vitalizes the body to go into action. We're told, for example, that Albert Hubbard declared that his most important ideas came while he was relaxed or working in the garden or going for a walk. The reason being when the conscious mind is relaxed, when the conscious mind is relaxed, when the, when the conscious mind is relaxed, I lost my space. So when the conscious mind is relaxed, the subconscious mind, the sub subjective mind and the wisdom comes to fruition. It comes forth. There are oftentimes inspirational uprushes when the conscious mind is completely relaxed. So he's saying that important ideas come when this part is completely shut off, right? It's completely shut off because this is free to just be and to just whoosh, flow. This is not getting in the way. That's why sleep is so important. Always be careful what you go to sleep thinking about, what you're emotionally involved with, because it will marinate overnight in the, in the garden of your mind. Truly, when we go to sleep, so remember, this is the seed house. This is the garden. So when we shoo, 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 shut that down, all the seeds fall right into the, the subconscious mind, regardless, because we're no longer holding them here. They just, shoo, they drop. They just release. It's like we're holding a gate up all day consciously. And then when we release, we let them fall. But if we are involved in positive solution focused thoughts and we relax, we're gardening, we're walk, taking a walk where it, it falls right here and we get that answer without struggle or strife because we've shut out this and we're engaged in allowing, receiving. All right. How often have you wandered at night, wondered at night, when the answer to a particular problem was, and when you turned, let me read that again. How often have you wondered at night what the answer to a particular problem was, and when you turned the request over to the subconscious mind, it came, it gave you the solution in the morning? Have you ever felt that? Don't you ever feel good after you've really thought about something or something bad happens in the morning? It's a little bit resolved. Okay, so it's given over to the subconscious mind. It gave you the solution in the morning. This is the meaning of the old adage, night brings counsel. Night brings counsel. We're allowing our subconscious mind to give us those answers because it has them all. It's that universal consciousness. If you want to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning and you suggest 7 o'clock to the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind will wake you up at seven o'clock on the dot. Ooh, try this. A mother may be nursing a sick child and she falls asleep, but before she goes to sleep, she, she suggests to the subconscious mind that she will awaken if the child's temperature goes up or when it needs medicine or perhaps cries. There may be a thunderstorm going on while the mother sleeps, yet she is not awakened by the storm. However, when the child cries, she immediately awakens. This is a simple function of the subconscious mind. This is how we not just understand it, we give it commands. Remember, we talked about this last week. Our ship. This is our mind. We have the two parts. We have the captain, pretty much the wheel. I kind of was thinking that this really is the ship, our body. And this is like the wheel. That's a bad wheel, whatever. <laughs> so think of this acting up okay think of this this is our mind we're the captain we give commands to the subconscious mind the wheel that steers the ship the ship is our body and it brings us to our destination so what orders are we giving our subconscious mind in the direction that we're going we consciously that's why we have to really pay attention to what thoughts and what things were what mental diet we are engaging with what mental diet plan are you on is it full of negativity pessimism problem focused or is it 
optimism, solution focused, happy thoughts that make you feel good. Give the commands over to your subconscious mind and it'll move the ship in the direction. So really, this is an easy way to determine it. I want you to think about your life right now. Where are you at? What port have you sailed into? What port of life are you in? What port do you find yourself in? Do you like the port you're in? The job you go to, the relationships that you surround yourself with, your financial situation, and your health, your body. What port are you in? Do you like it? What destination have you arrived at? Where do you find yourself? If you don't like it, this helps understanding how we move and get out of it. Life is always changing, constant changing. Nothing is permanent, nothing. Everything is always changing. We must, why not just take the steering wheel and go into the direction that we want? Why not? A lot of times we don't feel worthy. It's about worthiness. It's about not feeling like we deserve it. It's just worthiness, basically. Do you feel that life is on your side? Do you feel that God is on your side? Do you feel that the forces that be, whatever you want to call it, is on your side? Do you feel like the universe is on your side? Do you feel like you live in a friendly or a hostile universe? You have to make that decision because it is happening for you whether you know it or not. Depending on your results, you can probably choose. Do you have an unconscious belief that life is against you? That the universe is against you, that people are against you, that God is against you, that people don't want you to win, that God doesn't want you to win, that God doesn't want you to have what you want. Do you think that? That's an inquiry you inquiry. You have to go inside and really explore for yourself. What do you truly believe? What are your really root thoughts about life? Think about switch your just for today. This is a mantra I use all the time. Everything always works out for me in the most miraculous ways. God goes before me making my way sure. Isn't it wonderful? Thank you, God. Everything always works out for me in the most miraculous ways. God goes before me making my way sure. Isn't it wonderful? Thank you, God. I think that's a Florence Goldshin um, affirmation or quote. This is another one I have here. I walk in a field of grace, divinely guided by God every step of the way. Every move I make is in alignment with God's will for my life. Amen. This is, these are the flowers that I surround myself with because there are other things that are out of my control that also surround me and do get in because it, we highly overestimate our ability to, that doesn't affect me. That doesn't affect me. That's not a big deal. Come on. I can be on social media. I can scroll. It doesn't affect me. Uh, I can watch that movie. I can listen to that music. It has no effect on me. If you're not exactly where you want in your life, I would highly, highly take a very close look, recommend taking a close look at what you're engaging in. What are you putting in your mind? What podcasts are you listening to? This is the way I think of it. Whatever you're investing in, Whatever you are looking at, whatever you are listening to, whatever you are surrounding yourself with, the mental diet in your head, the conversations you're having with others outside or within, most importantly, what ROI are you getting on that engagement? What return on investment? Every single thing you do consciously is an investment. What is the outcome? That is a direct indication of what you're investing in. Are you investing your thoughts or are you spending your thoughts? Are you wasting them? Or are you truly cultivating the life you want? What is it, what nutrients is it providing? It truly is a mental diet. After you listen to a TED Talk, after you listen to a podcast, what nutrients were in it? Think about that. I hope you enjoyed this. We're, we're gonna start chapter two tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow.